Hey to you friends. Uh, Brother Rob with you. So what I want to talk about in this video is, of course, some misconceptions and this is kind of, I thought about this in a, in a, in a tweet that I um, put on Twitter that has kind of blown up. Um, and the question on the, on my tweet was simply, <clears throat> this is a simple question that atheism can answer and the question is this. Why is it wrong to harm other, harm other people? Now, it, it, you know, it's, it's not surprising and that atheist answers like, so do you, so you need God to do, to do, to, to for you to do the right thing? Like, so if, if it wasn't for God, you would do evil? Like, to paraphrase the nonsense. When I, and I even said one to like, you know, well, we're creating the image of God, that's what gives us value. So then some lady said, okay, so, so it's okay, so, so humans are okay, but it's okay to be cruel animals. And like, well, that's ridiculous. Because I said that humans have value, doesn't mean I don't think animals don't. So, like, this is, the, but this is the, the framework and the thinking that they're, first of all, they're, they're unnaturally literal. Like, if I say humans have value, I'm not saying animals don't have value. No, animals don't have as value, much much value as human, because we're in the image of God in there, but they still have value. I mean, they're still creatures. <laughs> I mean, I believe that people who commit enemy, animal cruelty to enemy, animals should be locked up. Now, the other thing is they don't understand is like, they still have, if you, see, if you, if you, if you notice most atheists, like, 99 point something percent of them won't try to argue for naturalism or atheism. They will just simply attack theism. And the reason, again, I believe strongly that atheists will resort to attacks rather than defense is because one, <clears throat> atheism is indefensible, and secondly, that's all they have. <clears throat> you see, if your position was strong, you would be able to defend it. But atheism is not only a, not a strong position, it's a moronically absurd position. <laughs> atheism is moronically absurd. Like, it's, it, it's just so stupid as a position that it boggles my mind that people still buy this bullshit. Um, and personally, you know, looking at Romans 1, that I don't really think... There are atheists. I think there are people who just suppress the truth. In other words, I think everyone, I believe everyone knows that God exists. But we but people try to suppress that truth to try to uh, dull their own conscience so they can do the things they want to do without having to worry about the fact that they're accountable to a God who is morally supreme and holy and righteous and will call us to account. No, I'm not saying being good will save you, just so we're clear here, um, because it won't. Because we're not good. Um, that's why we need Christ. We need, well, you, only, the only thing that can save you, me, or anybody on this planet is the blood and righteousness of Jesus Christ, and that's it. The only thing you and I can contribute to is our condemnation. We contribute not one iota to our salvation. <clears throat> now, we contribute to sanctification in regards to obedience, but in the relationship, I should say, we don't. So we don't contribute to staying saved, we, but we contribute to the relationship in terms of obedience. Obedience affects the relationship, of course. But you cannot lose your salvation. <clears throat> but I'm going to get. I'm, I'm going to debate that next month. But anyways, I want to. So I'm starting to get a little off topic here. But anyways, <clears throat> atheists, I believe, do not defend it because they, one, they know it's indefensible, and two, is that's all they got. But I don't really believe there is atheists anyways. I think there's just people who suppress the truth and unrighteousness. As Paul rightly says in Romans 1. Like, <clears throat> you just look at the, you know, as, you know, to uh, quote, uh, Ray Comfort. You know that, there, if there, that, a, that a painting is evidence of a painter and a building is evidence of a builder. Creation is evidence of a creator. All right? Creation is evidence of a creator. Evidence! I mean, the evidence for God is overwhelming. Like, it's... it's you... 
There's only two reasons you would morally reject God. One is you're intellectually deficient, or two, you're morally deficient. Or three, I guess, both. <laughs> you can be both intellectually and morally deficient. In essence, the real reason people reject God is not because of an intellectual pursuit, because that's nonsense, be but people reject God because pride. Pride. You don't want to bow the knee to somebody else. So your pride keeps you from walking in truth because you are willingly, knowingly rejecting truth. Jesus is the truth. Do you know what the thing about the truth is? I thought about this today when someone told me a story. And there, you know, there's this thing what we call the ring of truth, right? Stories that are truthful, you just kind of know it. They have the ring of truth. And when someone tells you BS and lies and just tries to deceive you, you can usually pick out some 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 one some or one or more discrepancies in the story being told because it doesn't have the ring of truth. It doesn't sound believable. Now I'm not saying that every lie doesn't sound believable, but most lies have some kind of eh, that doesn't sound yeah. If you hang and especially if you hang around people long enough, the same people are lying. You can. Lies always find people out. I know this myself. Lies, my lies always find me out. So, and that's the thing is, um, we're supposed to live in truth, and God is truth. Jesus is truth. Which Jesus is not our truth. Jesus is the truth, which of course means Jesus is God. But <clears throat> my job is not to convince people of God. My people, my job is not to convince you or anybody of God. Approve any, that's not, that's not my job. It's God's job to prove himself. It's my job to represent God. Now, I'll be the first to admit that I could definitely improve many ways in how I represent God. All Christians can. But I'm saying I can too. There's, like, I have my moments of impatience. I have my moments of condescension. I have my moments where I just want to lay into people. <clears throat> I'm not going to make an excuse for these either, because there, there's no excuse for um, any of those. Um, but I'm just being I'm just being honest with my own humanity. Um, yeah. So, but atheists atheists need to see the love of Jesus, and <clears throat> well, not just it's people who claim to be atheists, I should say. Um, but all unbelievers, like, well, we need we need to be shown the love of Jesus. The thing is, too, is like I'm not gonna. The other hand, I'm not gonna sidestep or downplay or water down truth just to uh, appease you. Now, if you're looking for someone who's gonna affirm abortion or um, LGBTQ plus or transgenderism, look elsewhere because I ain't into any of that. I'm not gonna affirm what the Bible says is false. And I'm doing that because I love you, and I love God. And I'm more concerned with what God thinks of me than I am with what people think of me. Actually, actually, I'm going to say that uh, and even insulting me is a waste of your time because I'm not going to take it personally. 99.99% of the time, I'm not going to take your insults personally, and I wouldn't count on you're going to be the 1.01% that's going to get under my skin. <laughs> So insulting me is just a waste of your time. Now, if I insult you, it's probably it's more I probably more mean it toward insulting your position. Like if you say, for example, the other day someone said "Happy Genesis," like "Happy Genesis," you're a joke. But what I really mean is like the position of believing "Happy Genesis" that that uh, life can come from non-life, that carbon matter can come from non-carbon matter. That's a joke. So. When I laugh, I'm, I'm, I'm laughing at the position more than anything else. 
No, per people can take. I mean, people take all kinds of things offensively. I mean, you know, we uh, as Bill Maher, who's an atheist, you know, we live in a world of, where people are emotional hemophiliacs. It's like it's like people bleed at the slightest thing. So I think is a perfect way to describe a lot of people in this world. It's like everyone's so easily offended, and I'm not going to go out of my way to offend people, but I'm not going to withhold the truth just because it offends you either. Okay, so know that clearly. I'm going to tell the truth. If it offends you, I don't care. I'm not saying it to offend you, but I'm not going to back down from truth because it does offend you either. So, and this is the life of Christ. I'm willing to accept that people are not going to like me because I follow Jesus. I'm not here to be liked. I'm here to speak the truth in love. And that's it. And I call all you non Christians, all you God haters, to repent of your sin and give your life to Jesus. You're going to bow your knee to Him, and it's either going to be voluntarily done or it's going to be forced. But I'd rather that you do it voluntarily. Because if it's forced, it means you're going to suffer the wrath of God. And I don't wish that upon anybody. The wrath of God is a real thing. And all you got to do. Stop trusting in yourself and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And repent of your sin. Give your life to him. And trust him. Today's a day of salvation. Repent and trust in Jesus Christ. And if you have made that decision, then you're my brother or sister, and I love you. I mean, I love you even if you're not my brother or sister, but it's a different kind of connection. Um, that's it for now. Peace out, Brother Rob.